This team in particular is the best I've seen. I can't believe that they just started a little over a month ago. It's, it's really remarkable. Our goal is that by 2017, we can select the first Tibet women's national team and they can start playing international matches all over the world, um, representing their country while in exile, representing their communities, representing their race, representing their sex. Um, that's what we want to do. And we want to train them too. We want to train them in communication and leadership and English and really give them the opportunity to become ambassadors. Cassie Childers, an American teacher who came to India to study Buddhism, but found herself in the midst of this refugee situation. Tibetan girls didn't play football. They had a men's national team that was doing some pretty cool stuff for Tibet. They didn't have a women's team. And that was when it was like a lightning yeah. strike. This Tibetan women's football team was formed in 2012. And so far, it has engaged more than 3,000 young Tibetan women living in exile. What, what I do know is what these players tell me. They're not allowed to, to express the true essence of their Tibetanness. They're not allowed to live their way of life. There's no person in this world who's more important to Tibetans than the Dalai Lama. And they're not allowed to have a photo of the Dalai Lama. So there is no freedom. And for many Tibetans, if they can give one of their children the chance at something better, by coming to India and getting a good education and, and being around the Dalai Lama, then they'll do it. They take this chance. And, you know, most of them were sent, you know, at the age of eight, nine, ten, from Tibet by their parents alone. After fleeing from Tibet, adjusting to a new society for these girls becomes difficult. Organized sports is a way for Tibetan women to enrich their lives and have a more positive influence within their community. On the first day, the thing that struck me the most was that they didn't speak, these girls. They're often not really given the opportunity to express themselves and, yeah. and speak. I realized, you know, I'm gonna have to not just concentrate on football here. This is gonna have to be like a full empowerment curriculum. After football practice, the players attend an empowerment session where the idea is to create a safe space for them to talk about issues of gender equality, societal pressures, and the Tibetan cause. A girl from five brothers, and I'm the youngest, and it's very really hard to um, deal with them. Then I said, and why you, if you don't accept my opinion or uh, things, then why you send me to school? I'll tell you one time that I decided not to give up when we were in Delhi at the embassy, and the girls came outside, and Gongo was holding the passports. And I knew we didn't get the visas. But then something changed. And what it was was you girls. I look over and I see you're writing this letter, and then you're making a video, and then said, I'm not give up. They don't give up in her. So, Cassie, tell us about some fond memories and memorable incidents. <laughs> no, things that yeah. happened, you know, like, yeah. tell us a story. So, we got this invitation rather suddenly to go to Germany. Uh -huh. I think about, like, two months before the actual tournament. They called me, they'd heard about